Hey, you. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth remain silent before him. We walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shall be right. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shall be right. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise him, all of ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that have been planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Her song is 217, I Love to Tell the Story. I love to tell the story of the unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing as not.
Lift up your hearts. Let us thanks. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you for one more day. We thank you for the ability to tell the old, old story of how our grandparents made it, of how our parents made it, of how we made it, and then how our children are going to make it. Lord, the, the world doesn't know the story. But if you go to the end of the book, there is going to be a reckoning. And those who love the Lord will be lifted up. Those who have faith will be lifted up. Those who hold on to hope and amazing grace will be lifted up. That's how the story ends. Lord, bless us to get to the end of our story. Bless us to get to the end of our journey with our heads held high and our hearts clean. Bless us, Lord, not to stumble and be taken off the road called straight. Bless us each day, Lord, to humble ourselves. And to realize we are your child. You are the potter and we are the clay. Lord, bless us to always realize that you're in charge. Don't let our mind and our ego get ahead of ourselves. Don't let our pride, Lord, and our feelings betray us. But always have faith and trust in you. Give us the strength, Lord, not to give into the world, but to listen to your holy, divine, and precious word that you love us and you are our God. And if we will be your people, you will make a day for us, you will make a way for us, you will have a home for us. Not in the palaces of the earth, but in the mansions of heaven. Bless us, Lord, to stay faithful to that promise. This is what we pray, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thy ear to us. Yeah. 
appear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears and gloom at me, spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear, let me the warmth to every hair. Open my heart and let me prepare, love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God I will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, spirit divine. Amen. Amen. Scripture reading this morning will come from the book of St. Mark, chapter 9, verse 14. Chapter 9, book of St. Mark, starting at verse 14. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a crowd about them and the scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And they asked him, what are you discussing with one another? And one of the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a dumb spirit. And whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid, and I ask your disciples to cast it out. And they were not able. And he answered them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, immediately convulsed the boy and fell to the and he fell to the ground and rolled about foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has he had this? And he said, from childhood. And it was often, it often cast him into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have pity on us, help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit saying, you dumb and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out and the boy was like corpse, so that most of them said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he rose. And when he entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. These are God's words for God's people from all that dwells below the skies. From all that will be known the sky, let thy creation you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy on us, and invite our hearts to keep this law. My soul be on thy guard, then God has unfold our eyes, and hopes of sin our presence. 
Christ our Savior said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the to come from the congregation. Any announcements at all? Good morning, Owen Chapel. Good morning. Good morning. Just reminding everyone about October 31st, next month, 
Missionary Sunday, we do have a theme, and I'll announce it again the sooner we come to October. Thank you. What about the first? On the first, on the first, you said we have something on the first of Um, the, the thing is, hmm? oh, did you want to announce that? I'll announce it next week. Okay. Lay Witness Sunday's coming up, but we'll explain it to you next the week. Good morning, on Chapel. Good morning. And God bless you. Yeah. Ernest Luna's family wants to thank you for the support and the love that you gave him. They were very appreciative, and, and Ernest had wonderful things to say about his time here at Orange Chapel. So I told them that I would pass on the appreciation from the family and uh, the love that you bestowed to him. You never really know how you affect other people until much later. Sometimes you don't get to know. Uh, but he let his family know that he felt uh, at home in this church. And so the family asked me to let you know they appreciate everything that was was uh, done for you. We provided uh, some food for the repast, and many of us attended his service. So I'm passing that on to you from their family. Amen? Amen. Amen. No other announcements? Okay. We'll tell you about Lay Witness Sunday next week, and Gabe will help you prepare for the Missionary Sunday, which is going to be on on October 31st. What is October 31st? Mm -hmm. No, that's going to be Missionary Sunday. We're going to make it Missionary Sunday. Some of us don't celebrate Halloween. Some of us don't go trick or treat. Some of us are not going to be involved with goons and goblins and dark spirits. It's going to be Missionary Sunday. You can change! by your presence. You can change the world with a smile. You can change the world by saying no and then standing by it and meaning it. So we'll tell you about that next month. Fall is coming, amen? And each night gets a little bit cooler. It's warm last night, but each night is starting to get a little bit cooler. Suzanne, thank you for the, the fall decorations. You're welcome. So, so, some people, some people love flowers. Now, if she couldn't do that, I'd be in trouble. Pastor, I want to put my flowers up. But whatever you give in Jesus' name is going to be appreciated. So, thank you for your decorations. Susan and Carol make sure that we have flowers for the season, every season. Amen? Amen. Some people do things that you don't always watch them do. But appreciate them. Let them know that you appreciate their efforts. I, I, I appreciate <laughs> Doris and Melba coming up from Crucis uh, uh, when they come. That's a trip. Amen? Amen. It's a journey. You got to get ready early. You got to get your mind right. You got to get here and then you got to get back. Thank you, Lord. Many of you go out of your way to help other folks. I, I know that. I'll be watching you. But you may not always get credit from man. You may not always get a pat on the back. You may not always get your flowers while you're here. Um, so do that. When you do something uh, and, and you get appreciated, then do the same thing to someone else. Find someone doing something good and let them know that you appreciate them. If there are no other announcements, why? God is a good God. Mm -hmm. Anybody realize that the things that he does for you that you just don't even realize. Come on. Come on. So in that instance for me, 
We have to always focus on putting him first in our lives. And putting him in the center of everything that we do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I lost my direction, you're the compass of my way. You're the fire and light when nights are long and cold. When you're the shadows that clears all of my fears. When I'm all alone. Your hands are there to hold. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect come from you. Nights are long and cold. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect come from you. You're the fire and light, Lord, when it's cold. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. You're why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadow and the stream. The voice Oh, the voice of the children, my family, and my home. You're the source and finisher of my, 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 my highest dream. Jesus, you're the center of my joy all that's good and perfect come from you you're the heart oh lord of my contentment hope for all i do jesus you're the center Jesus, you're the center. Jesus, oh Jesus, you're the center. Jesus, you're the center of everything I do. Jesus, you're the center, oh Jesus. You're the center of my joy. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from me. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do, Jesus. 
I was going to sing this morning, but after the president sang and after Melvin sang, I decided I'd just leave that alone. Amen? Amen. Go with me again to St. Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 23. St. Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 23. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished. And they said to him, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, Lo, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sister or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. And in the age to come, eternal life, but many that are first will be last, and the last first. God's word for God's people. Let me share with you a true story. It's about a man named John. Now, don't get ahead of me because some of you know this, John, and some of you don't. Some of you have experienced what John went through. Some of you haven't. But let me tell you from the beginning John was a mess. Not a mistake, he was a mess. He'd been a mess for a long time. He started out with good home training. His parents taught him the right thing to do. He had a good moral foundation. His parents were recognized as leaders in their community. But John, John was a mess. He went to sea because his father was a ship captain. And the father thought, well, I can teach him some skills, some discipline, how to read the wind. And, and, and the sunsets and, and, and learn the tides and I'll make a man out of him. So he sent him to see it at age 12 and taught him the ways of a sailor. He wanted his son to be successful. Most of our parents want us to be successful. They tell us the right thing to do. Do this and then don't do that. We heard in Sunday school, if the parents don't know, they can at least point to the book. Here. Take God's word and God's promise and stand by it. Many of us received good training as young people. Many of our parents did the best they could do. And John's parents did the best they could do. But John was a mess. John should have excelled in leadership. He should have been a morally upright person. But John was not the model citizen that his parents expected him to be. After sailing training by his father, he was a pretty good sailor. And because of that, he was impressed into the British Navy. What sailing and navigation skills he gained from his father, they were lost in unprincipled discipline. He soon was arrested for desertion of the Navy, publicly flogged, and demoted to common sailor. Still in his teens, he got permission to join the HMS Harwich, a ship bound for the African coast. Why do you think they were going to Africa? Slave. Yeah. So John got on a slaving ship. Not a cargo ship. Not a ship to protect his nation. 
What a slave ship. By now, the unsettled, impatient youth was emerging as a rotten apple in the barrel, mocking authority and choosing his friends unwisely. John sank to the depths of vice and degeneracy. John started associating with the lowest members of the crew. John was a mess. When he reached Africa, he fell into the service of a slave merchant. He said, oh, you got a lot of wealth. I'm going to learn the slave trade from you. So he bound himself with a man who was a slave trader. You have to be careful what you touch, folks. You have to be careful who you associate with. You have to be careful with what you say. You, you need to be careful because the world is full of things that are not always good for you. Amen? Amen. There are demons out there that will take your body over and be in charge. So John said, yes, I'm going to go into business view. Several months later, John found himself working along the slaves. The man turned on him and put him on a plantation as a worker. And it was almost a year before he could escape. He, he jumped a ship called the Greyhound and snuck on board to get away from his slave trade. And you think that at that point he would have given thanks to God. But the minute he got on that ship, he felt free. He went back to his old ways. He looked for the worst sailors that he could find. That's who he associated with, gambling and cursing. They mocked the captain. They made fun of him. There was a book on there called The Imitation of Christ. I don't know if anybody's read it. But John mocked the book. He said, can't nothing be good in that book. And that night, the Greyhound, which he was on, sailed into turbulent waters. A storm had come. And it was so violent that it collapsed the sides of the ship. And the ship started to take on water and sink. The record shows that the ship didn't sink. The sailors were bailing that water as fast as they could, but after about six hours, they were exhausted. They said, we're gone. We, we toast. We, we're not going to make this. The record shows the ship didn't go down. It had a lot of buoyant cargo on it. It had a lot of barrels. It kept the ship, the ship afloat. Right before the end came, John realized for the first time in his life that he was going to die. You know, some of us think we're going to live forever. Amen. Tomorrow. And to no. There's going to come an end to your tomorrows. He realized, I'm, I'm not going to make it till tomorrow. And for the first time in his life, he prayed a sincere prayer. Lord, if this will not do, have mercy on me. You know, every year after that, John celebrated that day that God saved him by praying and fasting. John, after several expeditions as a slave trader, retired as a sailor. He went and became a minister. Hmm. He became an abolitionist and fought to free slaves and wrote a treatise to the British Parliament saying, you should outlaw slavery for these reasons. Two weeks after he died, the British Parliament abolished the Atlantic slave trade. But John was inspired many years later to write the words that all of us have heard and most of us have sang. It's on page 226 in your hymnal. John, a slave trader, made it to the hymn books. Amen? Amen? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm fine. I was blind. But now I see. John was Reverend John Newton. He was knighted by the king. He was knighted as Sir John Newton, author and the publisher of the song Amazing Grace. If we were to write our own story, honestly, to write our own story, 
we might not have been as dramatic as John Newton. But most of us could testify that it was God's hands that held us up. It's because of God that we are still here. God is not through with you yet. Otherwise, you'd be gone. We'd have had your service, had a repast, and gone on with our life. God's not through with you yet. Your destiny, your life, your purpose has not been completed. You're still in God's hands. You are yet alive and have the ability to overcome much, to achieve much, and to affect much. Listen to me. Paul was a mess. He killed because he thought, he thought, that's what God wanted him to do. Had Christians persecuted. Took letters from the high church and found Christians as, you're under arrest, come with me. That's, Paul was a mess. And God had to stop him on the road to Damascus and said, why are you persecuting me? Paul said, I don't know who you are. Sometimes we persecute people and we don't even know who they are. We just go after them. We think that we know better than they do. Peter was a mess. Peter was a cursing, crude sailor. Did you know that? If he was going to do it, he was going to do it well. He got out cursed. He was a crusty old curmudgeon. That's who Peter was. Until he met Jesus. He was a mess. He denied Jesus many times. He said, Jesus, you know, all these others here, they're going to leave you, but I'll never leave you. I'll never. Lord, I'll be with you to the end. The Lord told Peter, you're a mess. <laughs> the cock's going to crow three times. And you're going to deny me. Peter was a mess. Mary Magdalene was a mess. At least her reputation was a mess. I don't know what she did and what happened. They, they just said she was a woman of the street. She was a mess. That's what the story says. All I know is that when she met Jesus, he cleaned up her mess. Yeah, amen. Rahab was a harlot. That's what the scriptures say. I don't know. I wasn't there. The woman had to feed her family. She had to do what she had to do. It says she was a she was a mess. But when God's people came, they said, "Help us, and we will save you and your family." And she did, and she was redeemed, and the family of Christ came through her family. Nicodemus was a mess. He couldn't stand his own two feet and say, Lord, I, I know that you, he came sneaking at night. Amen. Sneaking at night. Jesus, I, I know that you are the one. Uh, uh, why didn't you say that in front of your friends, Nicodemus? Why didn't you let the elders in the church know and those people who you run with? No. Nicodemus said, sneak at night. He said, Nicodemus, you have to be born again. Nicodemus said, born again? How can I enter my mother's womb again? No, you have to be born again. You have to be born of the Spirit. He says, how, how's that going to happen? And Jesus told him, you're a mess. How can you be an elder, a teacher in this community and not know about spiritual rebirth? The woman at the well was a mess. How many husbands she had? Five? Going on six, she was a mess. But she met this man named Jesus. And he told her about living water that she would never, ever have to thirst from. The living water that Jesus poured out to all of us. And she said, give me some of that water. Some of us are a mess. We need to be 